An all-time record total of almost 21 million fans paid to see Major League Baseball during the 1948 season. In Fenway Park, Boston, 34,000 watched the Cleveland Indians and the Boston Red Sox battle it out in the first postseason pennant playoff in American League history. Keltner's mighty circuit clout in the Cleveland fourth scores Woodrow and Gordon ahead of him. And it's the Indians four, the Red Sox one. In the fifth frame, Indian Lou Woodrow rams out a rousing round tripper, his second home run of the game and 18th of the season. With that kind of hitting and the fine pitching of their southpaw hurler Gene Bearden, Cleveland defeats the Boston Red Sox by a final score of 8-3. to three. And so in a brilliant postseason finale, the Cleveland Indians win the American League pennant and their chance to meet the National League's Boston Braves in baseball's annual fall classic, the World Series. Now to Bravesfield, Boston, for the final phase of baseball's greatest year. This is the first World Series ever played between the Indians and the Braves. Each team has made one previous series appearance. In 1920, Cleveland won the World Championship from the Brooklyn Dodgers, and the Braves defeated the Philadelphia Athletics in 1914. But that's all past history. The great throng that crowds Braves Field today is more interested in what the Indians and the Braves can do in 1948. Among the spectators are Boston Red Sox manager Joe McCarthy and treasurer and general manager Joe Conan. Roy Mack, son of baseball's beloved Connie Mack. The Boston Braves manager Billy Southworth gets last minute best wishes from Mrs. Southworth. Lou Woodrow, the playing manager of the Cleveland Indians, salutes his wife. And then Southworth and Woodrow exchange greetings. Umpires, managers, and coaches go over the ground rules. Cleveland is pinning its opening game hopes on the rapid right arm of veteran hurler Bob Fuller. Against him on the mound will be another right-hander and seasoned veteran, the Boston Braves' big Johnny Sane, with 24 wins during the past season. Baseball's commissioner, Albert Chandler, gives the honor of making the traditional first pitch to former Secretary of State James F. Burns, and the 1948 World Series is officially underway. The game is a scoreless tie going into the Braves' fifth. Left fielder Rickard rifles a sharp single into right for Boston's first hit of the game. Catcher Sawkell sacrifices Rickard to second but he's left stranded there. Boston's Earl Targerson opens the bottom of the seventh with a grounder on which Robinson makes a brilliant gloved hand catch and retires Torgerson with the toss to Feller. In the Braves' eighth, Feller walks Bill Salkel. Phil Macy is sent in to run for him. Center fielder Mike McCormick rolls a sacrifice bunt down the first baseline. Macy takes second. The excitement of the inning intensifies when Fuller purposely passes Boston second baseman Eddie Stanky. Cleveland tries their famous pickoff play. Macy is called safe at second. With two out and men on first and second, Tommy Holmes drills an outside pitch past third base, and Macy scores for Boston with the first run of the 1948 World Series. After one away in the Cleveland ninth, Joe Gordon pops up a high foul on which shortstop Dart makes a catch. That's two down, and the Braves' big Johnny Sane is only one out away from a World Series shutout triumph. Keltner laces a high bounder to Elliott, whose wild throw to first bounces into the stands, and Keltner moves to second on the error. The Tribe is back in the ball game with the tying run on second and Walt Judnick up. After Judnick misses two curve balls, 
Sane prepares for the most crucial pitch of his career. There it is. Judnick watches a perfect strike go by. And Johnny Sane wins the first one to nothing World Series shutout seen in a quarter of a century. Sane's strong right arm and Tommy Holmes ringing back have combined to bring home victory for Boston and the crowd roars its approval. To turn the trick, Johnny Sane practically throttled Cleveland's big bats, struck out six men, allowed no walks, and only four hits. And Tommy Holmes slammed his way into Boston's heart and its Hall of Fame with one decisive smash to left field. Rapid Robert Feller hurled the 10th two-hit masterpiece in World Series history and lost. A heartbreaking defeat that makes him the second pitcher ever to lose a series two-hitter. There'll be a big time in Beantown tonight as Boston celebrates the Braves' first World Series victory in 34 years. Ah, the soft, gentle breezes of Venezuela. The peaceful, sun-drenched streets of Puerto Rico. They're some of the most tranquil destinations in the Caribbean and two of the most passionate rivalries in baseball. For one week in February, the tropics really heat up, and MLB Network brings you all the action live from Mexicali, Mexico. The Caribbean World Series, starting Monday, 5 Eastern on MLB Network. See how some of the world's best ball players relax on their vacation. Hi, it's Vince with Sham Wow. You'll be saying wow every time you use this towel. It's like a chamois, it's like a towel, it's like a sponge. A regular towel doesn't work wet. This works wet or dry. This is for the house, the car, the boat. The RV. ShamWow holds 12 times its weight in liquid. Look at this. It just does the work. Why do you want to work twice as hard? Doesn't trip. Doesn't make a mess. Wring it out. You wash it in the washing machine. Made in Germany. You know the Germans always make good stuff. You can cut it in half. Use one as a bath mat. Drain your dishes with the other one. Use one as a towel. Olympic divers. They use it as a towel. Look at that. Completely dry. Put a wet sweater. Roll it up. It dries your sweaters. Here's some cola. Wine, coffee, cola, pet stains. Not only is the damage going to be on top. There's your mildew. That is going to smell. See that? The most absurd. We're going to do this in real time. Look at this. Put on the spill. Turn it over. Without even putting any pressure, 50% of the cola right there. You follow me, camera guy? The other 50%, the color starts to come up. No other towel is going to do that. It acts like a vacuum. And look at this. Virtually dry on the bottom. See what I'm telling you? Sham wow. You'll be saying wow every time. I can't live without it. I just love it. Oh my gosh. I don't even buy paper towels anymore. If you're going to wash your cars or any kind of vehicle, you'd be out of your mind not to own one of these. All I can say is sham wow. You're going to spend $20 every month on paper towels anyway. You're throwing your money away. The mini sham wows are for everything, for everyday use. This lasts 10 years. This lasts a week. I don't know, it sells itself. The Sham Wow sells for $19.95, but you get one for the house, one for the car, two for the kitchen and bathroom. But if you call now, within the next 20 minutes, because we can't do this all day, we'll give you a second set absolutely free. So that's eight Sham Wows for $19.95. Comes with a 10 year warranty. Here's how to order Call 1 800 753 2185. That's 1 800 753 2185. Sham Wow is not available in stores and is made in Germany. Beware of Sham Wow imitators. Call 1 800 753 2185. That's 1 800 753 2185. Call now. We've all been in tough situations on the ball field and in life. When I was younger, I was a part of RBI. It stands for Reviving Baseball in Inner Cities. Everybody bring it in. It's a place where kids can come together, work together, and play together. So they can handle the tough situations on the ball field. RBI on three up here. One, two, three. RBI! And in life. Major League Baseball proudly supports the RBI program. <laughs> The next day, another capacity crowd jams Braves Field to see if the Boston Nationals can increase their one-game lead before the series moves on to Cleveland. Southpaw Warren Spahn warms up before opening on the mound for Boston in this second game. Cleveland is counting on the strong right arm of Bob Lemon to even up the series. With two away in the Cleveland first, Woodrow bounces a slow dribbler past the mound. Elliott's pick up and throw are a split second too quick for Lou. That kind of scintillating infield play is worth a second look in anybody's ball game. In the Boston half of the same frame, after one out, Dart bangs Lemon's first pitch to Gordon, 
who fumbles the grounder, and Dark is safe at first on the error. Torgerson steps up and lines a sharp single to right. Dark scurries around a third, and Pitcher Lemon's in trouble. Then Elliott slams one over Boudreaux's head for a single, and Dark scores the first run of the ball game. A lightning throw from Pitcher Lemon picks off Torgerson at second. In the Cleveland second with two away, Larry Doby lashes a hit to center. And with a terrific burst of speed, stretches it into a double for the first extra base blow of the series. Going into the fourth, the Tribe is still looking for their first run of the series when Boudreaux lines a double just inside the right field corner. Right behind him, Gordon loops a safety to left. That scores Boudreaux and ties up the ball game at 1-0. Gordon takes second on the throw to the plate. After one out, Doby slashes a hot rounder into right. And Gordon comes across the plate with the tally that puts the tribe out in front, two to one. Opening the Indians' fifth, Mitchell lambs a single over Dark's head into left center. Outfielder Clark follows with a sacrifice that puts Mitchell on second. Woodrow, the third man up, smashes a single through Spahn's legs. And Mitchell tallies. That's all for Boston Southpaw Warren Spahn. Charlie Red Barrett replaces him on the mound and closes out the inning with the score standing Three to one for Cleveland. After Dobie fans to open the Indian sixth, Robinson connects with a hit into center. Right behind him, Hegan explodes a long drive to deep right. Holmes makes a beautiful gloved hand catch and his throw to Torgerson retires Robinson for the first double play of the series. In the eighth inning, Boston right-hander Nelson Potter starts on the mound in place of Red Barrett. Ken Keltner taps a roller on which shortstop Dart races over and makes a fast play to retire Keltner at first. Earl Torgerson opens the Braves eighth with a single to center. Then Bob Elliott hits into a lightning fast double play. The Tribe infield is really clicking with the type of razzle dazzle that merits another look. There's Torgerson forced at second. And Elliott out at first when Robinson digs Woodrow's throw out of the dirt. The Tribe's out in front three to one going into the top half of the ninth. When with two out and Jim Hegan on third, Kennedy drops a Texas leaguer into short center field. And Hegan crosses the plate with the run that makes it Cleveland four, Boston one. After two out in the Braves ninth, Eddie Stanky starts a last chance rally with a hard driven double over Boudreaux's head into left center. Ray Sanders pinch hitting for Potter follows with a tap to pitcher Lemon who throws him out at first. That ends the ball game and evens the series at one all. Cleveland's four to one victory is a fine scalp for Bob Lemon, who limited Boston to eight well-scattered hits 
and one unearned run. The Braves' defeat is charged against Warren Spahn, who gave up six hits and three runs in four and one-third innings. We long for spring and cheer through summer, but it's October we wait for all year long. Now, thanks to MLB Network, you only have to wait till the weekend. Starting Saturday, the White Sox, hoping for a title after 88 years, while Houston makes their first series bid ever. We live the pivotal postseason games of 2005 as the Southsiders make baseball history. October Classics, starting Saturday, 11.30 Eastern on MLB Network. Does anyone have the winning lottery numbers? Tonight's or next week's. Is the Museum of Art... No, it's closed on Tuesdays. Where's the nearest... Leaker in West 4th. <laughs> what is a dendrobium? It's a type of orchid. What was the name of the... Series? Charles in charge. Wow. That guy's amazing. What's his... Horace Ghost Man at your service. Gesundheit. Growing up, the Boys and Girls Club was a safe place where I was taught important lessons, like being part of a team. Teammates learn to play together, work together, and stick together. <laughs> Major League Baseball and Boys and Girls Clubs of America understand the importance for kids to have a safe place to learn and grow. Teamwork is what made us World Series champions. And the White Sox have won the World Series! Major League Baseball is a proud sponsor of the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Together, they create a positive place for kids. Pastime goes full-time. MLB Network, your new 24-7 television home for Major League Baseball. They asked me if I would like to play. I said, absolutely. Vamos a Puerto Rico. You are able to do something for your country. It was a, it was a great feeling. Expectations for excitement and drama. I don't think many of us are expecting these two to be in the final. They're showing the people in the world that there's more to just being powerful and doing big name. That ball is hit high and deep to left field. It is with great pleasure that we present the championship trophy. And now the Diamond's great classic moves to the tribe's gigantic home wigwam for its most important phase. Three weekend games in Cleveland's Mammoth Municipal Stadium, which already holds all Major League Baseball attendance records for regular season play. Total attendance here for the 1948 season was a fantastic 2 million 600,000 fans. In this third game, the Braves are starting pitcher Vern Bickford, 28-year-old right-hander. The Indians are sending to the mound hurler lefty Gene Bearden. His one loss record for the season is 20 and 7, including that choice plum that he picked in Fenway Park, his victory in the American League pennant playoff. In the Cleveland third, with one away, pitcher Bearden slugs the horse side for a mighty ride over Holmes's head into deep right, where it bounces off the fence. It's a two-base hit for Gene. After Bickford walks Mitchell, Dobie grounds to Stanky, whose throw to Dart forces Mitchell. On Dart's wild relay to first, Dobie takes second, and Bearden scores for the try. Take another look at that play. Watch the runner go for the shortstop to explode a possible double play as Bearden's tally puts the Indians ahead one to nothing. After Keltner's on first with a walk and one out in Cleveland's fourth, Robinson drives Bickford's first pitch for the base hit. Keltner stops at second.
Keegan also hits the first pitch for a line single to center that sends Robinson to second and scores Keltner. The Indians lead two to nothing. Bearden bangs another first pitch for a safety to left, but Robinson holds up at third and the bases are loaded. The tribes on the warpath. Bickford leaves the mound. Big Bill Voicell replaces him, puts out the fire, and all three men are left on base. Cleveland is still ahead, two to nothing in the Braves' sixth. With two away, when Dart plasters the leather against the left field wall for a rousing double. On Mike McCormick's fly to short center, Gordon grabs the ball on the run just before it drops between Woodrow, Doby, and himself. That ends the Boston sixth. With two away in the Boston ninth, Mike McCormick's pop fly to Woodrow ends the ball game. The Tribe blanks the Braves two to nothing and takes a two to one lead in the series. The shutout is a triumphant encore performance for the Indians' pennant playoff hero, Gene Bearden. Ah, the colorful charm of the Dominican Republic. The epic history and culture of Mexico. They're some of the most scenic destinations in the Caribbean. And two of the most passionate rivalries in baseball. For one week in February, the tropics really heat up and MLB Network brings you all the action live from Mexicali, Mexico. The Caribbean World Series, starting Monday, 5 Eastern on MLB Network. See how some of the world's best ball players relax on their vacation. Almost 82,000 fans gather in the Indians' big teepee for game number four. It's the biggest crowd in World Series history. Warming up for the Braves is their ace right-hander, Johnny Sane, the man with the curves, and victorious pitcher of Boston's only win of the series so far. Opposing him will be Cleveland's right-handed hurler, Steve Gromek. After two out in the Braves' first, Targuson's terrific smash to the center field fence looks like a sure triple. But Targuson stumbles and retreats to second, 
It's a double and the first hit of the game, but he fails to score. Mitchell whistles a safety through the center of the diamond to open the Cleveland first. Doby smacks one to Torgerson, who tosses to Sane to force Doby at first. Mitchell takes second. That put out Merritt's another look in stop motion. How's that for a close one? When Woodrow smashes the ball hard and far inside the first baseline, Mitchell scores for Cleveland with the game's first run. Woodrow tries to stretch his double into a triple, and he's out at third. That's a mighty close one, too. Here's how it looks in stop motion. The Braves are behind one to nothing in the third. When Stanky rams a hit to center, Dobie's fast fielding prevents a possible double. Sane sacrifices Stanky to second, but the Braves don't score in the inning. In the lower half of the third frame, with two away and nobody on, Indian Dobie rockets Sane's high, fast pitch for a trip to Mars. A lethal wallop more than 400 feet into the right field crowd. Dobie's round trip is the first home run of the series. Now the Tribe leads two to nothing. There are two out in the Boston fourth when Rickard punches a base hit to center. On Mike McCormick's grounder, Woodrow makes a fine stop and flips to Gordon to retire the side. With Boston still on the short end of a two to nothing score going into the seventh, Rickard hammers a homer 400 feet into the right field stand. It's Boston's initial round tripper of the series. Rickard's tally makes it Boston one, Cleveland two. In the Braves eighth after two outs, Torgerson hits a looping double past Keltner. And the Braves tying run is on second. Then Elliott pops up a high one. And catcher Hegan holds onto it as he collides with Keltner. That ends the inning and the Braves threat. Boston still trails two to one going into the ninth. Rickard, the first man up, watches a sharp breaking curve go by for a call third strike. The next man, Mike McCormick, travels the same road as Indian hurler Gromek really bears down. The third man up, Sawkeld, batting for Macy, then rifles a game-ending line drive into Kennedy's hand. And Gromek's got him, one, two, three, in a brilliant finale. Gromek's stout heart and strong right arm combined to prove him the better man in a nerve-tearing pitcher's duel with Johnny Sane, who won the first series game for Boston. Final score of game number four, Cleveland two, Boston one, and the Indians lead three to one in the series. We long for spring and cheer through summer, but it's October we wait for all year long. Now, thanks to MLB Network, you only have to wait till the weekend. Starting Saturday, the White Sox, hoping for a title after 88 years, while Houston makes their first series bid ever. We live the pivotal postseason games of 2005 as the Southsiders make baseball history. October Classics, starting Saturday, 11.30 Eastern on MLB Network. You've waited 28 years for this, Philadelphia. Phillies are world champions. Now you can own the official 2008 World Series DVD. Filled with clutch plays, dazzling defense, and game-changing moments. Packed with bonus features. Give it to him. And an unforgettable World Series celebration. Look at goosebumps, man. It's, it's crazy right now. 
Available now at MLB.com. Inning four, in our film, it's called A National Heirloom. The worst title that I've ever invented for an episode because what we wanted to call it was That Son of a Bitch because that's what everybody called him and referred to him as because he was so talented. This is a larger than life figure. When we usually tell stories about people, they're sort of mythic and it's good and bad. But of course we have in us all both those elements, and I think we respect when we tell a complicated story, and I like how complicated Babe Ruth is. You know, when people ask you questions about pop music, you really, to be honest, have to say, you mean besides the Beatles, and then go on and name what it is or what it is. And it's true in almost everything that you talk about. There's always some protean figure that you really have to just set aside, and it's Babe Ruth. I mean, he'd have a hard time playing today, uh, he'd be caught up in scandals and controversies and maybe distractions. He wouldn't have that kind of, you know, laser beam concentration that the players today have to have. I think to me that made him more interesting. Didn't make him more great as a baseball player. That was, those, those accomplishments are, are right there. The way he hit the ball, that huge upper, upper body and that tiny little body down below, the stick legs. Uh, all of that is so interesting and he is the greatest player in baseball history. And then after that, you can argue, well, I like Willie Mays, I like Ted Williams, I like Joe DiMaggio, oh no, Mickey Mantle's my guy. No, Barry Bonds is my guy, and I'll tell you why. But it's always besides Babe Ruth. You know, he still casts a shadow in our lives, and I'm very happy with that. Ken Burns' Baseball continues Tuesday, February 10th at 8 Eastern, only on MLB Network. Sunday, October the 10th, 1948, goes into baseball's record book as the biggest day in the history of our national game. 86,288 paid fans overflow Cleveland's gigantic municipal stadium, the largest crowd ever assembled for any baseball contest anywhere, anytime. On hand the game are Ford Frick, president of the National League, Hank Greenberg, Vice President of the Cleveland Indians, and their dynamic, promotional-minded president, Bill Beck. The American League President, William Herridge, gives best wishes for success to Lou Woodrow. Boston's right-hander, Nelson Potter, warms up, fully aware that the Braves have to win this fifth game to stay in the series. Cleveland's hurler, Bob Fuller, who lost a two-hitter in the first game, hopes to crush the bitter memory of that defeat with a series-ending victory today. The moments before game time are taught with immense anticipation as the band parades for the flag-raising ceremony. The tremendous throng rises and stands united in common allegiance to a mighty republic and its great national game. But in just a few moments, the crowd will be divided again by league loyalties and team partisanship when the call comes to play ball. Holmes starts off the fifth game with a bang for Boston as he rams a single to right. Dart dribbles a slow roller to Keltner for an infield single and Holmes takes second. After one away, Bob Elliott gets hold of Feller's fastball and lays the wood on the horse side for a rousing slam beyond the right center field fence, 365 feet away. The wallop scores Holmes and Dark ahead of Elliott, and the Braves lead three to nothing.
In the Indians' first, leadoff man Dale Mitchell connects with Potter's second pitch and rifles a round-trip blow into the right field crowd. The series of silent bats is breaking into a rash of booming bats as the big sticks begin to speak. Mitchell's tally makes it Cleveland 1, Boston 3. With two away and nobody on in the Boston third, Elliott explodes Feller's curveball pitch to slug a line smash 350 feet into the lower left field stand. That's two home runs for Elliott in two times at bat. His four-bagger makes it Boston four, Cleveland one. That score still stands going into the lower half of the fourth frame when Indian Gordon drills a safety to left. After Keltner walks, Judnick loops a handle hit over second past Dart's lunge. And Gordon scores from second as Keltner races to third. After one out, Keegan drives a 375-foot blast into the lower left field stand. It scores Keltner and Judnick ahead of him. And Hegan comes home with the run that puts the tribe out in front, five to four. To reach the World Series takes pure will, sheer force, a little luck, and a lot of determination. Next time on World Series Highlights 2002. Belted to right field. Barry Bonds kept swinging for the fences in his record-setting year, but even he couldn't stop the rally mother. The Anaheim Angels, champions of baseball. World Series Highlights 2002, coming up next on MLB Network. Hi, may I help you? Yes, uh, I hear Progressive has lots of discounts on car insurance. Can I get in on that? Are you a safe driver? Yes. Discount. Do you own a home? Yes. Discount. Are you going to buy online? Yes. Discount. <laughs> Isn't getting discounts great? Yes. There's no discount for agreeing with me. Yeah, I got carried away. It happens to me all the time. Helping you save money. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. My first week home was great. We had a party, small party. Two o'clock in the morning, they were waiting for me. My niece was waiting for me at the airport with a sign and balloons. There was a huge sign across my front house, and it said, Welcome home, Megan. They lifted me up on, on their shoulders, and, and uh... First week back, people just said thank you. They just said thank you. A new generation of veterans is coming home. Make a difference for them at welcomebackveterans.org. Today, 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 what an opening act, huh? I think we've got a leading man, and many of them. Money Mays just brought this car to a beat. Swing it on the drive! Happy man! A swing, a long drive, way back, way back. It's cool! <laughs> There's a new home run champion of all time! Sandy into his windup. Here's the pitch. Here's the pitch. Bill Presidente has painted an absolute masterpiece. He's going. Homer is the end of the trail for Boston's pitcher Nelson Potter. Southpaw hurler Warren Spahn takes over on the mound 
and closes out the fourth with no further score. What a ball game. With one away in the Braves sixth, Salkill hammers a homer that just clears the right field fence and ties up the score at five all. Then Mike McCormick scorches a sizzler to Woodrow, who makes a dazzling stop and a fine throw in time for the out. The 5-5 tie still holds going into the Boston 7, which Holmes opens with a single to left center. Dark lays a sacrifice bunt down the first baseline that sends Holmes to second. Up comes Torgerson who drills a safety over second. It scores Holmes with the run that puts the Braves ahead six to five and drives Bob Feller from the box. These Braves are on the warpath and are just too much for Rapid Robert. Indian relief hurler Ed Kleiman replaces him. Kleiman promptly walks Bob Elliott, the first brave, to face him. Then Rickert rams a grounder past Gordon into center. That scores Torgerson. Dobie's throw to third gets by Keltner, allowing Elliott to score and Rickert to go to third. That play of third certainly warrants another good look in stop motion. The Braves lead eight to five with one away when Sawkell walks. And that's all for Indian pitcher Ed Kleiman. Another right-handed relief hurler, Russ Christopher comes to the mound. Mike McCormick wraps out a single that scores Rickard while Sawkill takes third. Then Stanky bloops an outside pitch into right for a single that tallies Sawkill and sends Mike McCormick to third. It's Boston 10, Cleveland 5. Out goes Russ Christopher. And in comes Cleveland's ageless Satchel Page to mount the mound for the trial. Then Spawn punches a high fly to Dobie in deep center. Mike McCormick scores easily after the catch. Boston 11, Cleveland 5. That ends the Braves scoring in a tremendous six-run inning that staggers Cleveland. To open the Tribe's eighth, Woodrow doubles to the center field fence for the first hit off a spawn. But there's no score in the inning. After two away in the last half of the ninth, Indian Joe Tipton, batting for pitcher Munkree, strikes out to end the ball game. The winning hurler, Boston South for Warren Spahn, who allowed only one hit and no runs in five and two-third innings, is escorted triumphantly from the diamond. More than 86,000 fans watched the Braves pounce on loser Feller for seven runs in six and a third innings, and saw them rout the Indians with a six-run seventh inning and an 11-5 victory. That cuts the Tribe's lead to three games to two as the series returns to Boston for the crucial sixth game. To reach the World Series takes pure will, sheer force, a little luck, and a lot of determination. Next time on World Series Highlights 2002. Belted to right field. Barry Bonds kept swinging for the fences in his record-setting year, but even he couldn't stop the rally monkey. Yeah, World Series Highlights 2002, coming up next on MLB Network.
You've waited 28 years for this Philadelphia. Phillies are world champions. Now you can own the official 2008 World Series DVD. Filled with clutch plays, dazzling defense, and game-changing moments. Packed with bonus features. Give it to him. And an unforgettable World Series celebration. You get goosebumps, man. It's, it's crazy right now. Available now at MLB.com. Pastime goes full time. MLB Network, your new 24 7 television home for Major League Baseball. The minute they asked me if I would like to play, I said, absolutely. Vamos a Puerto Rico. You're able to do something for your country. It was a, it was a great feeling. Expectations for excitement and drama. I don't think many of us are expecting these two to be in the final. They're showing the people in the world that there's more to just being powerful and doing big names. the big base hit. That ball is hit high and deep to left field. It is with great pleasure that we present them. Championship trophy in this World Baseball Classic. Back at Braves Field, another capacity crowd gathers to see if Boston can even up the series today. Right-hander Bob Lemon, who hurled the Tribe's first win of the series here in Boston, will open on the mound for Cleveland. Starting against him will be the Braves' big right-hander, Bill Boisel. It's a scoreless tie going into the Cleveland third. Mitchell laces a two-base hit down the left field line. Woodrow punches a drive to right. Holmes fails to hold the ball, and Woodrow gets a double. It scores Mitchell with the first run of the ball game. Stanky opens the Boston third with a walk. And Boycell sacrifices him to second. Holmes rifles a low line single to left, but Mitchell's fast fielding and good throw to the plate holds Stanky at third. Then Dart bangs into a double play that ends the inning. Cleveland leads one to nothing. In the Braves' fourth after one out, Elliott tops a slow roller down the third baseline for a single. After Rickard flies out and Salkeld walks, Mike McCormick hammers a safety to center that sends Salkeld to second and scores Elliott with the tally that ties up the ball game. It's one to one going into the sixth, which Joe Gordon starts off with a mighty wallop over the left field wall. Gordon's four bagger breaks the tie and the tribe goes out in front two to one. After one away and Tucker's on first with a walk, Robinson lines a single to right on which Tucker takes third. Higgins bounce to Elliott, forces Robinson at second. But Stanky's high throw to first gets away from Torgerson, and Tucker tallies. Score Indians three, Braves one. With one out in the Braves half of the seventh, on Stanky's grounder, Keltner comes racing in to make the stop, and a fine throw that beats Stanky to first. Going into the eighth, Cleveland still leads three to one. Warren Spahn, yesterday's winning pitcher, starts on the mound in place of Boisel. 
Joe Gordon opens the frame with a smashing drive to Rickert, who makes a beautiful diving catch for his 20th put out of the series, which ties the existing record for six series games. Next in line, Keltner slices a single off a of Spahn's glove. Then Tucker shoots a single to right, and Keltner holds up at second. Robinson punches a base hit over Torgerson's head. As Tucker takes third, Keltner scores, and the Indians take a 4-1 to one lead. Then Hegan strikes out to make it two away. Robinson is caught off first. Tucker tries to sneak home and is trapped in a rundown play that ends the Indians' half of the inning. On World Series Highlights 2002, Barry Bonds kept swinging for the fences in his record-setting year, but even he couldn't stop the Anaheim Angels. World Series Highlights 2002, coming up next, only on MLB Network. I just wish I didn't give up that last home run. You showed a lot of heart out there by never giving up and trying your best. That's what really matters. You know how many home runs I gave up in 05? 26. But you did have 163 strikeouts. There's nothing like positive support, and there's no place like the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Together with Major League Baseball, they create a positive place for kids. <laughs> Present Baseball and our exclusive interview with award-winning documentarian Ken Burns, sharing new insight about his acclaimed series. Inning four in our film, it's called A National Heirloom. The worst title that I've ever invented for an episode because what we wanted to call it was that son of a bitch because that's what everybody called him and referred to him as because he was so talented. This is a larger than life figure. When we usually tell stories about people, they're sort of mythic and it's good and bad. But of course, we have in us all both those elements. And I think we respect when we tell a complicated story. And I like how complicated Babe Ruth is. You know, when people ask you questions about pop music, you really, to be honest, have to say, you mean besides the Beatles, and then go on and name what it is or what it is. And it's true in almost everything that you talk about. There's always some protean figure that you really have to just set aside. And it's Babe Ruth. I mean, he'd have a hard time playing today. Uh, he'd be caught up in scandals and controversies and maybe distractions. He wouldn't have that kind of, you know, laser beam concentration that the players today have to have. I think to me that made him more interesting. Didn't make him more great as a baseball player. That was, those, those accomplishments are, are right there. The way he hit the ball, that huge upper, upper body and that tiny little body down below, the stick legs. Uh, all of that is so interesting. And he is the greatest player in baseball history. And then after that, you can argue, well, I like Willie Mays, I like Ted Williams, I like Joe DiMaggio, oh no, Mickey Mantle's my guy. No, Barry Bonds is my guy, and I'll tell you why. But it's always besides Babe Ruth. You know, he still casts a shadow in our lives, and I'm very happy with that. Ken Burns' Baseball continues Tuesday, February 10th at 8 Eastern, only on MLB Network. Opening the Braves' eighth, Holmes. Rams Lemons first pitch into center for a single. After Dart flies out, Torgerson blasts a two base hit to the right field corner. Holmes holds up at third. Then Lemon walks Elliott. The bases are loaded. And that walk sends Lemon to the showers. Lefty Gene Bearden. Shutout victor of the third game comes in to hurl for the Indians. Clint Connitzer, pinch hitting for Rickert, cracks a long fly to Tucker in center. Holmes scores easily after the catch, 
and Torgerson takes third. Then Phil Macy batting for Schalkel doubles off the left field wall. Torgerson scores while Elliott takes third and the Braves trail by only one run. Then Mike McCormick bounces to Bearden who throws him out to end the inning. The score, Cleveland four, the Braves three. Spahn strikes out Bearden to open the Cleveland ninth. Then Kennedy goes down swinging. After more of the same treatment, Doby fans. And Spahn has retired the side on strikes to conclude a near-perfect performance of precision pitching in the inning. In the Braves' half of the ninth frame, Stanky leads off with a base on balls, his third walk of the game, and his seventh in the series. Connie Ryan will run for him. Sibby Sisti batting for Spahn, tries to sacrifice, but Hegan grabs his low pop bunt and doubles Ryan at first. Then Holmes hammers out a long fly, which Kennedy pulls down near the left field wall. And the 1948 World Series is all over. The Cleveland Indians win a 4-3 triumph over the Boston Braves in the final game to take the series four games to two. It's the tribe's second world title. They won the first one in 1920. Every man on the team shares credit for the crown, but some among them were outstanding. Manager and shortstop Lou Woodrow excelled in every phase of play, and particularly as a master field general. Lefty Gene Bearden, hero of this pitcher series, sparked the tribe to triumph in the Classic, as he did in the American League pennant race. Hurler Bob Lemon faced the Braves twice and won both games. Outfielder Larry Doby was Cleveland's top hitter among the regulars in the series and performed excellently on defense. The Braves had their stars, too. Pitcher Johnny Sane's first game victory forced the Indians to come from behind to win. Pitcher Warren Spahn won the fifth game for Boston before the biggest crowd in baseball history. First baseman Earl Torgerson was the Braves' leading hitter and played his important position faultlessly. Third baseman Bob Elliott was the Braves' next best hitter and hit two consecutive home runs in the fifth game. The Tribe commences their first series victory celebration in 28 years, and theirs was no easy triumph. They had to win their pennant the hard way in the first postseason playoff in American League history. In the series, they came from behind to win three in a row, and then blew a spectacular opportunity to end the series on their home diamond before baseball's all-time record crowd. They had to return to Boston to close out the series, four games to two, and bring to an end another year of our great national game. The jubilant tribe claims they'll repeat in 49. Who can tell? Nobody knows. But you can be sure of this. We'll be back again next year with the motion picture story of baseball's fall spectacle, the World Series.